titled Requiem for a Night Sky. It's on my upcoming album that I've just started recording. I'm very excited about it. Large question. 
gotta get back to your eyes upon me Cause I dream about it every time you park your phone next to me Oh yeah, next to me Oh yeah, gotta get down on it was such a big year for America because it was the bicentennial, which is meaning that we are around for 200 years and there was fireworks and it was a big celebration. Um, so that's about, th th this song is about that. Um, yeah, enjoy. when I 
Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about that song? I'd love to. So I actually submitted that song for the NPR Tiny Desk contest um, this nice. year. So I've gotten to know that song pretty well. And I mentioned it's about the bicentennial. But the, the song originated with that hook that said, to each their own. I just imagine like this conversation between two people. And you know, we all have our own opinions, our own life paths and stuff like that. And whether it's a relationship c coming, coming to pass or something like that, it's just like that moment where you look at each other and you go to each their own. We have differing opinions or we're in different places in our life. And that's how the hook of the song started. And then as I started to go with it, I think the imagery of someone staying up late, writing something that's very important, just reminded me of like Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. So I picture like Abraham Lincoln, you know, 
up late at night with his feather and quill, just like, oh my gosh, this has to be the best speech ever. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of like drawing on that imagery and, and uh, folk lore, you know, which is where folk music traditionally comes from. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so I've got some more music for you. Let's see what should we do next. I put a star next to this one, so I will play. Actually, let's do this one. She 
Thanks, Kendra. Thanks. Do I have time for some more? Yeah, I think so. Awesome. Let's do another one. Okay, yeah. Just one more. Excellent. I've got a, a, a fan favorite for you. <clears throat> Singing, baby, ooh, 
<laughs> Thanks, Kendra. It's great. Hey, did you ever? See, I'm sure you probably saw the film School of Rock, right? School of Rock? You mean the? Um, oh yeah, for sure. With Jack Black, because I just when you played that song, of course I have, I remember that song was fresh, but with School of Rock that just revived uh, uh, popularity of that song and, and the, the famous scene scene where they're dancing on the tables and then. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that because I feel like you just revived it again. That was a really I, cool. I one. love that comment. Thank you. Um, I actually used to go to a school of rock type uh, summer camp called Camp Jam, which really opened my eyes to rock and roll music in general. Um, so also that movie is kind of like resonates with me because I used to go to a rock and roll summer camp. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Uh, stand by because I think we, um, we seem to bust in line with... Uh, with Cody, but um, I think we still have the Reverend. On hey, what's up, everyone? I'm still Kendra. I'm also still All the Bunnies. Um, I've got some new music, uh, some more music for you. Um, this title is called A Series of Self. It started as a poem. Um, and then maybe I'll t tell you a little bit about like what the poem was inspired by uh, post song. Oh, that's 
Thank you. So that song, um, thank you so much. That song, I said it started as a poem. It actually started as a dream before that. Uh, so I had this dream this one time where I was uh, going down to my subconscious. So I took an elevator down to my subconscious, which is reflected in the poem. And then I looked around and uh, that I wrote that poem about that dream that I had. Um, and then as I started to format the song, of course there is the influence of, um, I'm just a man and my intentions were good. Please Lord, don't, please, Lord, don't let me be, be misunderstood. Um, as well as it reminds me of the No Doubt song, Just a Girl from the 90s. And I thought that was a really good uh, collaboration to just go straight into that No Doubt song. Groovy. Um, all right, let's keep going. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, this one is titled, uh, no, let's do this other one, okay. This one's titled And Leave It On. So the story about this is, um, let me tell you the story after, okay. Yeah, love is a way. 
song called uh, Love Light, where in the middle of the song, it's like, turn on your love light, let it shine on me. In the middle of the song, Bob Weir, who's the rhythm guitarist, goes, and leave it on! And so that's what the title of the song is, and leave it on. It's also about the Japanese art of kintsugi, which is the art of when you break a piece of pottery, you put it back together with gold leaf. Um, so you essentially make a broken piece of pottery more special and more significant. Um, once you put it back together, which is also the same kind of um, essence of getting your heart broken and learning from it and making the best of the experience. Thanks. Okay, we'll play some more music for you. Um, this next one is by a gal who was an influence for me when I was very young. Musically. Oh 
Thank you. Thank you very much. It's funny because, okay, so that was probably one of the first albums besides the Spice Girls that I listened to was Britney Spears' Hit Me Baby One More Time. And as I was learning this song, I was like, it sounds so different when I play it with rhythm guitar versus like a pop album. Hit Me Baby One More Time. I'm like, hit me baby one more time. Totally different essence. I agree. Totally. Um, so we'll just keep moving down the line. Awesome, let's do this one next. This is a classic blues song. <clears throat> Called I Know You Writer. so much thank you can you tell us a little bit about that song totally so that song is called well it's called woman blue 
or I Know You Writer. It's a classic blues song that's been around since the early 1900s, I guess whenever blues started, which would be after jazz. So maybe like the 1930s, 40s. Yes, but it's a classic blues song that was made known to me by the Grateful Dead. And uh, I love this song because one, it's one of the first songs that I ever like learned how to play. And two, because, you know, I'm a big fan of the Grateful Dead. So whenever I'm listening to one of their shows or if I'm at a Dead & Company concert or if I'm listening to a tribute band, when they go into I Know You Writer, I know it the first chord transition and I'm always just like, I know you writer. So um, it's super fun to be able to call those songs um, as well. And, um, you know, I lived in Colorado from, I lived in Denver, Colorado from 2016 to 2018. So I think that that's also fun because, um, you know, I'd shine my light through cool Colorado rain is, is very symbolic of where I was in my life when I lived in Colorado. It was like, no matter what, I'll just shine my light through the rain. I'm in Colorado, I'm having a good time. Love my life. That's great. Yeah, thanks. That feeling that you're talking about too, about like the very first note or chord of a, of a song and just suddenly you're like struck, you're stunned because you know it, you resonate with it and it's an amazing feeling. Yeah, yeah. Would you like me to continue? Please, please. Awesome. Okay, cool. So this next song that I have for you is, some people call it transcendental. Um, and I'd have to agree, agree with them. It's called The Tra Traveler's Slant. It's from my first album.
Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Really good. Good voice. Really good voice. Thank you very much. I, What's I love being able to share my voice with you too. So thanks. That's great. What was the name of that tune? That tune is called The Traveler's Slant. It's about, um, well, it's a lot about, it's about a lot of things, but I'd say it's about um, finding who you are and choosing your own path and, and discovering like what habits do you have and what routines do you have, do I have that, uh, that benefit my life and what other ones can I adjust so they further benefit my life? You know, like what are things that I do in a day-to-day -day life uh, day to day experience and how do they impact who I are, who I am in the grand scheme of things. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Um, okay. Let me do this. Um, I want to do a new song for you. Do you mind if I go grab my book real quick? No, no, no. Go ahead. That's awesome. fine. So maybe um, if, if you've got the mind for it right now, maybe I, I think people could be interested to know how you connect with becoming yeah. a performer and, and discovering guitar. And I don't know, you, you sort of, it, how, you know, if, if there was a point in your life um, when you were so connected to music and, and you just suddenly like, were like, okay, this is it. Man. Do you do it full time? I mean, is it? Is right, it, you know? right. So um, I'm a full time artist, musician. Um, I started as an actress at age four. I, uh, you know, saw, I was in a pink boa. I still remember the moment. I saw this girl on the TV screen with a twinkle in her eye and I was like, oh, mom, is that what being a movie star is? And she was like, yes. Um, this was back when I lived in Houston. So we, we went to enroll me in musical theater. And so I started in musical theater, which is acting, singing and dance. Then in high school, I discovered rock and roll music. So I was like, whoa. This is, this is crazy. You're saying there's music that's, that's like musical theater because it carries this, the story of the play along. You know, there's so many stories throughout rock and roll music um, and folklore that are carried along through the actual music. So I was just kind of like flabbergasted by that. At the same time, I started writing poetry. <clears throat> Continued acting, I'm still an actress. And then I started playing the guitar and kind of developing my own voice through the poetry and through um, just like hearing other musical influences. Um, I do music full time. I'm actually, I'm also a writer too. So these are two books that I've published up here, which are both uh, poetry, one act plays and philosophical essays. And um, yeah, I, yeah. And uh, um, I'm working on a memoir right now and I'm also working on my third album that will also have a book being published with it as like a songbook poetry i'm talking about just like what the songs are about and how they were written uh you know i, I want to ask you as a as a music producer uh what's your experience like as an artist in, in these days working in a studio what, what, what's the atmosphere like what's the um what are the sort of what's the sort of atmosphere in the studio these days for you i mean i know every studio could be different but Right. So I actually, um, I also, I went to, hold on, how do I answer this question? I actually record myself because I'm trained in recording, mixing, mastering, and um, production. I use Logic for my recording. And so this has been really great because during the quarantine, I was actually thinking of um, recording my third album at the studio because I was like, look, my first two albums went really well, and I really like this new material, and I want to add more of a full band element versus doing all the instruments myself. Then the stay-at-home thing happened, and I was like, you know what? This is obviously, you know, a sign that right. I should record my album at home. And I ended up reaching out to other musicians who also have the ability to record at home. So we're doing like a collaboration um, in this time, and I think it adds like a historic element to the fact like we're stuck at home and um so i'm recording right now at home i would say the, the vibe of uh live music performance is coming back around to being a local music vibe you know people are excited to get out there and hear new stuff um especially because you know the radio has a lot of the similar same similar type songs so i find um a lot of amiable people who are looking for new music in actual venues. Cool. Yeah, I can 
I can really relate to that uh, creativity part in the studio and collaborating uh, specifically with Logic because that's uh, something that I turned to this past year um, now that I'm, I've shifted from PC recording to, to Mac recording. Not that I favor one over the other, but um, it just happens to be what's, what, what's right in front of me um, uh, for, for production. And, um, and I really like this, uh, you know, um, ability to collaborate. So, uh, I can, I can sympathize with the joys that, that the self quarantine, uh, has, has brought upon you and, and, and me and a lot of, uh, people and, and being creative in that way. Yeah. I mean, it's been an interesting time because I'm reaching out and connecting to people that I might not have necessarily connected with. Like, I might have come come to meet you guys in Connecticut for a show or something, but now we're meeting prior to to a live performance, which is great. You know, um, I think it's a, a really great thing for music these days because the live stream allows for this kind of personal connection where you're hearing um, my lyrics and my songs up close and personal. Um, so it adds a different element to the way that the music is actually heard and consumed. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think there's uh, a benefit to that, actually, it, it, uh, for you delivering what you want to uh, express as an artist. Yeah, yeah. And so many opportunities to do so. It's kind of opened my eyes. It's like, okay, yeah, the internet's been right here. And it's like, oh, what a great vehicle to share my music and, and collaborate with people and talk to people. Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. Um, so do you have time? Um, do you have time? Uh, would you like to do one more tune? Because we have some time for, for another song. I'd love that. OK, great. Thank you so much for, for performing for us and for everybody. We're really grateful that you came on. Thank you. It's a treat to, to be here. This next song is um, it's inspired by Penny Lane from Almost Famous, as well as Daisy from The Great Gatsby. It's called Daisy. It's going to be on my upcoming album. And um, I'm super excited about it.
she's a traveler. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, before we let you go, I, I wonder if I can, uh, if you have a minute, I can open the floor up to anybody who might be on Zoom who has any questions they might want to ask. I don't see anybody with their hand up, but I just wanted to mention that. Just um, Yeah, to that's see. awesome. I'm open. Yeah. Any questions from anybody? Okay, well, that's an awkward silence. <laughs> awkward silence. Well, uh, we can appreciate that too. Yeah, okay. Um, Kendra, thanks again so much for, <laughs> thanks so much again for, 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 for performing on, on our series. Um, we look forward to the day when you come to Connecticut and we could host you at our venue. I'd love um, that. That'd be love great. That. Um, has your has your uh, gigging been mostly in LA and stuff, or have you? I've actually played a little bit on the East Coast. Right, uh, March, the beginning of March, I was actually at the Millennium Music Conference in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, okay. Two cases there. I played New York City, um, mostly Brooklyn, but a little bit in Greenwich Village as well in October two thousand nineteen. Okay. Then I'm from uh, Portland and Denver. I'm from Texas. So get this, uh, Texas has actually reopened. So my gigs coming up in June for Austin, Houston, and Dallas are still on, which is awesome. Okay. So I'll be there next month. Great. That's awesome. Um, so I see we have Cody Dillon uh, on. Yeah. I. Uh, he is come and go, gone uh, on occasion. So I, I see that he's here. Uh, let me just uh, see if I can get him to um, unmute himself and, and, and turn on his camera and see if he's ready to come on. Um, once again, thank you so much uh, for, for performing for Ten Selden in, in, on our audience. Uh, it's, it's been um, incredible to have West Coast meets East Coast in this way. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that you and that you're all healthy. Um, stay healthy. And... Stand by. We're going to see if Cody's ready to perform. Thanks again, Kendra. Thank you again. All right.